Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're still in Rome, but we saw this setback happen with SpaceX and I just wanted to report on it real quick for you guys. So I was reading a bunch of articles on a bunch of rags and I combined them all together just to let you know what happened. What is the cause of it? And how much of a setback is this going to be for SpaceX? Going to the moon, going to Mars, Artemis, and all the rest of this stuff here. What does Elon have to say about it? And that's what we're gonna get into today. So first I wanna get into this article, and then I'll give you my commentary and what I think about this. And more importantly, down below, I wanna hear what you think about it. What do you think? What's going to end up happening? Is it going to push them back? Or are they going to just be able to keep on going? Because they do have backups lots of backups and that's what we're going to get into today so anyways let's jump right into this article then like i said i will give you my commentary before i do i just want to say that if you enjoy the content throw it a thumbs up that'll be very helpful don't forget to subscribe if you're not if you are thank you i appreciate that click this little notification button over here so when i go live when a new video comes out you'll be notified of it immediately and if you want more spacex content i have over 500 videos for you that i've put together over the last 48 months Check them out. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, go back here and click on it. You'll see a bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, and of course, what to buy and not buy, and the why behind all of it, because this channel is about the what, about the why, exactly. So, fireball at Starbase. Starship 36 explodes during test fire. In a dramatic turn of events late Tuesday night, SpaceX Starship 36 explodes during a test fire attempt in Massey Test Facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The fireball captured live by multiple cameras lit up the night sky around 11 p.m. Central Time on June 18th. Ship 36 was being prepared as the upper stage for the highly anticipated Starship Flight 10 mission. What went wrong? a COPV catastrophe. According to Elon Musk, the failure stemmed from a nitrogen COPV or composite overwrapping pressure vessel located in the payload bay. The vessel failed, quote, this is according to Elon, well below proof pressure, meaning that it blew up in a pressurized state that was well below what it could possibly withstand. So that is a problem. He said this on a post on X, marking the first failure of this type in the Starship program. COPVs are critical components used to store pressurized gases. A malfunction here could suggest a design flaw or manufacturing defect, both serious issues that SpaceX must now address. Caught on camera, massive fireball rocks Massey test stand. Multiple live streams from NASA spaceflight as well as Lab Padre caught the moment and upper stage erupting into flames. The vehicle was undergoing propellant loading when the anomaly occurred. The explosion sent debris across the test stand and ignited secondary fires, which burned for hours. While the vehicle was completely destroyed, no injuries were reported. SpaceX later confirmed all personnel were safe and that safety clear zones were in place. Flight 10, timeline delayed. Flight 10 has been targeting a late June launch with Starship 36 paired with Booster 12. That timeline is now officially paused. While Booster 10 remains intact at the orbital launch mount, the destruction of Ship 36 will force a reshuffling of vehicles. Ship 37 is now the most likely candidate to replace it, assuming it can be brought up to test readiness quickly. Damage beyond the rocket. Not only did SpaceX lose Ship 36, but the Massey test stand itself, critical for upper stage testing, sustained significant damage. Rebuilding or even patching the stand could take weeks, possibly even months. That delay impacts the broader Starship test cadence, already under scrutiny following the explosive endings for Flight 7, Flight 8, and as well as Flight 9. We've been talking about those flights. Elon Musk reacts, quote, just a scratch. Elon Musk initially downplayed the incident with a sarcastic, quote, just a scratch, tweet, should be 
considered a post, not a tweet, but later clarified the technical nature of the failure. While SpaceX embraces a fail fast, learn fast model, this marks a particularly costly setback given the pace of up and coming missions, including NASA's Artemis and future Mars goals. What's next for the Starship? SpaceX will now focus on investigating the COP failure, assessing damage to the test stand and preparing a replacement ship. That would be that ship 37. While the setbacks are part of SpaceX's aggressive development philosophy, the pressure is mounting as 2026 Mars mission prep and NASA's deadline loom large. That is absolutely the case, guys. So, this is once again another failure to block two. We've talked about this on the live stream, the JC Live that we do, or Free Speech Friday. We've talked about this a lot during coverage of ship seven, eight, and test flight nine all failing right around the same time, right around six to eight minutes, they explode, right? And it's always some type of leak. And is this a leak also? Probably, <laughs> probably. If not, it wouldn't have just blew up the way it did. And this was a massive explosion. So that means that this thing was really close or fully filled. So this is something that they really need to look at. And like I said before, for some reason, there is some just negative mojo on this block two. Block one didn't have these problems. Block one had problems with the Raptor engines going out and this type of thing. But block two, it was this thing that they just constantly have like this leak or due to like vibration or harmonics that they call it or something. But this didn't have anything to do with harmonics. It was just simply sitting on the ground and it exploded before even test firing. So this is even more of a problem in my personal opinion, all right? Because somehow there was a spark. Why is there a spark? They didn't even begin the test fire. So this is definitely something that they need to look at. They already have ship 37 in the wings. And is it complete yet? No, but they're putting on the final pieces to it. They don't have all of the shielding on it yet, all those heat tiles. Also, they're installing the flaps right now, those fins at the top, right? The flaps that move that are sitting at like 40 degrees tucked in now compared to the block ones that are sitting at 180 degrees, completely different. This is just a new ship. And once they went to this new design, it's just been problem after problem after problem. And in my personal opinion, the same thing that I said way back when it blew up the last time on ship nine that ended up blowing up, I really do believe that they need to just simply just cut ties with block two, move on to block three, all right? And then just get a new look on things. And in my personal opinion, I think that they should go back to a block one structural setting, let's say, and then maybe install the Raptor three engines instead of the Raptor twos on there or whatever, but move back to the slightly smaller ship. It's going to carry 25% less fuel, but that's okay. There's not going to be those harmonic problems that you have with this longer ship. Remember, the harmonics always are an issue when you deal with something that's longer. When something is longer, when there's things that happen and there's vibration that happens, it causes even more tremors because it's longer. The same thing happens when you pluck a string on a guitar. A very short string, when you pluck it, it's a really tight harmonic, right? Whereas if you get a long string and you pluck it, you get that big vibration, right? That is what's going on with these ships. Now with this one, obviously it wasn't a harmonic problem, but it, once again, it has to be some type of leakage and even worse, a spark. What the heck? Why is there a spark before the test was even beginning? That is a major problem. So during this video, I ran some footage that was captured by NASA Spaceflight as well as Lab Padre. They always do a great job. They're constantly watching what's going on over there at SpaceX. And they're just, you know, kudos to them for doing it. They do a fantastic job. So anyways, I want to know from you, what do you think about all this? For me, I really do believe that they need to move to block three and just stop with this block two. It's just had some negative mojo put on it and they cannot break free of it. They need to like do some Palo Santo or some type of saging to these ships because I don't know, there's constant, constant problems that are happening. They need to move on. That's my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Do you think they should move on or do you think they should just keep on going with the block twos until block three is ready? I don't know. 
I really don't know. I think what they're doing right now, they're just falling behind because it's like a fail and a fail and a fail. You wanna see them fail and you wanna see them, like they say, fail fast and learn fast and that's fine. All right, that is good. You don't want to see this happen when there's actually personnel that are involved here, when you have people on board. So we'll see what ends up happening. I want to know what you think down below. What do you think? What should they do? What should they do? And also, do you think that this is going to push them even further back or are they going to be able to launch still this month at the end of the month? Because that's their cadence. They're looking to do two launches per month. Right? They have been granted authority, right, license to launch 25 times per year now. It's no longer five times for Starship, 25 times per year. That is two launches per month plus one extra one. So that's really great, but now they need to do it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. I'll throw some B-roll of me here in Rome, Italy, which is uh, hopefully something that you like. I'll do it at the beginning and at the end of all of my videos, like I said. And if you want to see more video content of Rome, I throw that over there on my Instagram page. You go to Instagram.com forward slash Joseph Christina, not J Christina. Instagram is Joseph Christina. Check it out over there. If you want to see photos, and any of my comments or whatnot, you can come here to the YouTube community page and find all of that information there. And finally, if you want to see any of my merch, go over to jchristina.com forward slash shop. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash shop and check it out. If there's something there you like, pick it up, help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.